Good day, everyone. We have already learned from uh, my last video that the tendency of a stock to move with the market is reflected in its beta coefficient. So for today, we are going to learn how to calculate the beta coefficient. Okay. So to illustrate how betas are calculated, we're going to use this data. Okay. So for, this is the historical realized returns over the last five years okay, of the stock in the market. So this from for five years. So that's year one to five. So this is the market. Okay. So that is with uh, associated with that K sub M. Right. And this is the stock X. Okay. So that's K sub J, right? So the average is 14.9%, both for the market and the stock. And the standard deviation for the market is 15.1 and the stock X is 26.5, okay? Now let's compute for the beta coefficient. Okay, so first we're going to plot the data points on scatter diagram and draw a line of regression. If the data points had fallen on a straight line, it would be easy to draw an accurate line. If not, so fit the line either by ocular inspection as an approximation or with a calculator. Okay. So that's it. So for year one, okay. So we have here, okay, the X axis, that's the historic realized returns on the market. And the Y axis, that's the historic realized returns on the stock X, okay? So for year one, for your X axis, which is the markets, that 23.8%, okay? So 23, 20 here, so somewhere here. For Y, that's 38.6%, so somewhere here. Okay, so that's why this is here. Okay, year one is here. For year two, that's 7.2% uh, negative in the market. So X here, so somewhere here, negative seven. And then for the stock X, for the Y axis, that's negative 24.7%. So here. Okay, so this is the year two. For year three, 6.6% for the market. So somewhere here. Okay. And then stock X, 12.3%. So this one. So this is the year three. For year four, so that's 20.5%. So somewhere here. And stock X is 8.2%. Okay. So this is the year four. Right. For year five for the market, that's 30.6%, so somewhere here. And for the stock X, 40.1%. So this is the year five. Okay. And we're going to draw the line. All right. Okay. What's the step two? The simple regression line equation means that Y is equal to A plus B X plus E, where Y is the dependent variable. A is the constant, B is the slope return on the stock given during a time given time period, X is equal to K sub M, the market, E is equal to the error term, division for the year. This varies randomly from year to year depending on company specific factors. And step three, once the data have been plotted and the regression line has been drawn, we can estimate its intercept and slope. The A and B values in Y is equal to A plus B X. So the intercept A is simply the point where the line cuts the vertical axis. The slope coefficient B can be estimated by the rise over run method. This involves calculating the amount by which K sub J increases for a given increase in K sub M or which 
uh, calculating the amount by which the uh, stock increases for a given increase in the market. Okay. So, for example, okay, we observe in this figure that this one, okay, A, this is the intercept, 8.9% somewhere here. Okay. Right. So, in this figure, for the example, okay, we observe that KJ, uh, this one, KJ increases from negative 8.9 to 7.1%. Okay, that's the rise. Okay, from here, so this is the point here. Okay, right. When, okay, so again, KJ increases from uh, K sub J increases from negative 8.9 to positive 7.1% or the rise when K sub M or the, or the market increases from 0 to 10%, the run. So this is the rise, okay? And this is the run. So thus B, the beta coefficient can be measured as this one. Uh, B is equal to beta is equal to the rise over run. Okay. Is equal to the change in Y or the change in stock, change in K sub J. Okay. So what's that? This is 16 because 7.1 minus negative 8.9, okay? That's equal to 16. And the change in X or the change in run, so that is 10 minus zero, so that is equal to 10, which is equal to 1.6, all right? Okay, so the regression line equation enables us to predict a rate of return for stock uh, K given a value of uh, market. For example, if uh, the market is equal to 15%, we would predict that the stock is equal to negative 8.9% plus 1.6, this one, the beta, multiplied by 15%. So that is equal to 15.1%. However, the actual return would probably differ from the predicted return. So this deviation is the error from E for the year, and it varies randomly from year to year depending on company-specific factors, okay? So note, though, that the higher the correlation coefficient, the closer the points lie to the regression line and the smaller the errors. Okay, in, in actual practice, monthly rather than annual returns are generally used for K sub J and K sub M. Okay, K sub J is, this is for the stock, K sub M is for the market. So, and five years of data are often employed. Thus, there would be five times 12 is equal to 60 data points on the scatter diagram. Okay, so monthly. So, there are 12 months in a year. So, that's 12 for five years. So, that's five times 12, that's 60. Okay, 60 points. So for example here, instead of just uh, plotting annually, we're going to plot this by uh, monthly. So there would be 60 points here. Okay. Also in practice, one would use the least squares method for finding the regression coefficients A and B. So this procedure minimizes the 
squared values of the error term. So it is discussed in also in statistic courses. So our beta here is 1.6. So what does that mean? Right? So as defined by our uh, from our previous video that if the beta is 0.5, the stock is only half as volatile or risky. If the beta is one, so the stock is of average risk. If the beta is two, the stock is twice as risky as the average risk. So our beta here is 1.6. So that's more close to two, which is uh, very risky. Okay. The stock here is actually risky. All right. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that by now you have uh, uh, knowledge on how to calculate the beta coefficient.